this week on the Orion Newscast. Our film critic Angel Ortega tackled Between Two Ferns, a delightfully fresh Netflix comedy. And Chico State's fifth annual drag show got crowds celebrating Queer Week with a full cast of performers. But first, men's soccer lost to Cal Poly Pomona by 1-0 with four minutes left to play. Hi, right, this is Wesley Harris, a sports reporter for the Orion. Today we're out here covering Chico State men's soccer versus Cal Poly Pomona. And today there was some real competitive action, really good game. Unfortunately, Chico came up short, losing 1-0 late in the game with four minutes left to play. Um, Kyle Poly Pomona sneak one into the left post. And for our post-game interviews, we're fortunate enough to interview Alex Fluitt and freshman Noah Ross to give us their thoughts on the game. So would you say this was the most important game for you guys for this for the season? Uh, I mean, every game's pretty important, but this one definitely hurts a little bit. We like to try and beat the best opponents and right. by track record Pomona and LA are the best. We just didn't get the goal today you know we had a couple that got called back but right. um, overall I thought we did okay we just need to try and get more goals. Right yeah. right um, what was your reaction to um, being called um, offside? <laughs> uh, you know as my friend Dilo would say you just got to keep applying pressure they're gonna try and take them off but you know you got to do what you can to keep applying pressure. I definitely feel like we came off to a strong start first half I definitely felt like we were on them a little bit uh, we just kept playing hard uh, throughout the, the whole game. I just feel like it was just a little bit unfortunate at the last couple of minutes that we just gave up a goal. Defensively, I felt like I, I could have done a little bit better tracking back, but I mean, I felt like I was working hard up top uh, most of the time. The backs in uh, our conference usually like spill the ball up if you pressure them hard enough. So our coach does a good job of, you know, motivating us to press. It's, it's kind of one of those things where you just got to get back to the chalkboard, keep grinding. Uh, we got a big game coming up Sunday too, so if we want to get ourselves to the top spot in the playoffs, win or lose, we're just we're just on to the next. So I mean, the game's already behind us, nothing we can do about it um, to change it. So I mean, we're just going to look forward to it, work even harder. Vinyl to the people at Blackbird Cafe gave the power of music to the audience. Hello there, I'm Alex Coba with the Orion News, and I'm here with... Natalie Ordaz. I'm the diversity coordinator for the hub. So just like personally, like I identify like in the LGBT community and just like being able to see events like this kind of like cater to like a specific like audience, it makes people feel welcome and like they want to come out and they want to just like enjoy and like celebrate that with people. So it's like, it makes me feel comfortable. Pretty good, I like the feeling of like night parties with like friends and community and stuff. And um, who was it? I'm also an intern with the GSEC, so we had, we, we came like pretty much after the Pride March, which is an interesting feeling like protesting and then coming here to like unwind and reprieve. I helped put on the drag show that was last night. It was very hectic. They, we got a lot of people. It was very enjoyable. Who was it? I'm mainly looking forward to like eating the food like whenever I'm able to do that because I'm very hungry. And I know that sometimes the university likes to tokenize like oppressed people within its circles. The fact that we're able to have those spaces almost because of that tokenization sort of. Not because of it, but it's like it's convenient, you know? And I'm glad that the Hub was able to put this on, and I'm glad that we're able to come together as like the queer community. Hello there, I'm Angel Ortega, and I'm the Orion's resident film critic. Today, I'll be reviewing the new Netflix original, Between Two Ferns, the movie. This is a fictitious spin-off of Zach Galifianakis' web series of the same name, where Galifianakis host of a public access talk show, dreams of becoming a renowned talk show host. But when Will Ferrell uploads clips of his show to the internet, Galifianakis becomes the laughing stock of the internet. So Galifianakis embarks on a road trip with his film crew where he interviews high profile ce celebrities in hopes of restoring his reputation. As someone who is only vaguely familiar with the original web series Between Two Ferns, and doesn't know much of Galifianakis' work outside of his roles in The Hangover and Due Date, I was not sure what to expect. I'm glad to say that Between Two Ferns was funny and it features exceptional writing and a standout performance by Galifianakis. Most of the film's humor, specifically Galifianakis' dialogue, is dependent on deadpan comedy. This complements Galifianakis' delivery and overall comedic style. The absurdity and awkwardness stemming from the interviews Galifianakis conducts caused me to laugh so hard that I couldn't breathe at some point. In fact, I don't remember the last time I laughed so hard during the film. Between Two Ferns, as far as comedies go, is a breath of fresh air. A lot of comedies these days are too dependent on vulgarity, 
cheap jokes, and getting the biggest names in hopes of selling more tickets at the box office. And often, all we really get are lackluster performances, dull narratives, and jokes or punchlines that fall flat. The last great comedy mainstream cinema has seen is The Hangover, and every big budget comedy since has tried to replicate it both in comedic style and narrative structure. To see a film like Between Two Ferns reject these common practices is refreshing. That's not to say Between Two Ferns is the next hangover, but it is a great and funny movie. I give it four stars out of five.